This storm will leave a large swath of impacts from the plains all the way to the east coast with heavy rainfall and even some severe weather as we go through the rest of this week into the weekend. You can see the jet stream is going to be amplified. That means we will definitely have the potential for not only severe storms, but also flooding. I've got the details on that. Temperatures and tropics right here. Don't forget, as always, that these awesome weather model maps that I use in my videos are from Weatherbell. If you want to check out their free trial link, it is right down below in the description. Let's use one of those Weatherbell model maps to give you a look at the pressure anomaly, showing you where high pressure systems and low pressure systems are going to be going to the end of this week. The main anomaly or difference from usual on this map is going to be that low pressure system that I have my good old magnifying glass over coming out of the plains into the Great Lakes from the midweek to late week time frame and all the way into the weekend. It's going to be bringing impacts. Of course, I've got the details on that and we're going to get right into that future radar moment momentarily but of course i just wanted to remind you before we really get into the content consider hitting that subscribe button down below after the video if you enjoy it and you are new to the channel but here we go let's get right into that future radar from the european model showing you what's going to be going on with the storms day by day for the next three to five days and as we go into the end of our wednesday august 14th 2024 of course it's late tuesday as i film this as we go into our wednesday we're going to be watching this general area for shower and thunderstorm coverage pretty much the rest of the country at least seeing some general thunderstorms or just completely dry this area is going to be the location where we're going to have low pressure forming you see it there in south dakota at least according to this model developing surrounding that some isolated severe weather and flooding will certainly be a concern especially as you get there into places like omaha nebraska over to des moines iowa back all the way on over here to northeastern parts of kansas and northern missouri those are some of the locations where the best chances for severe weather will be as we come out of wednesday into our early thursday speaking of thursday here we go towards our thursday afternoon and evening that low pressure system it is not only going to be surface based but we are going to have some elements of it well up there into the atmosphere. We're also going to have this little cold front that you can really see here, bringing that flow up and into the Great Lakes region. The heaviest precipitation will definitely be around that low up there in some parts of the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes, but the chance for severe thunderstorms will be most amplified there anywhere from around Kansas and northern Oklahoma all the way up there to southern Michigan and southern Wisconsin and areas in between at late Thursday. So be ready for that in those areas. You can see some of those storms that could quickly move southeastward Thursday night going into our early Friday over some spots of the Midwest and maybe even into the Ohio Valley. Day by day as this low moves through, it is just going to be getting slower and slower. So it's still over Wisconsin heading out of Thursday into our Friday. Some rain up there and of course some storms in the Ohio Valley and mid-south out of this activity along that cold front that's going to be there. Heading into our Saturday, the low, ooh, it's moved over from Wisconsin to Michigan, so not much movement there either, so a two-day stretch really only moving a couple of states. We're going to continue to watch the shower and thunderstorm chance increase gradually the further east you go, moving towards that Atlantic seaboard, really anywhere east of the Mississippi River, having that best chance for showers and thunderstorms late on our Saturday, August 17th of 2024. Heading into our Sunday, yet another day of showers and storms for a lot of the east coast, from Georgia up to Maine, looking like that best chance for storms will be there. And of course, it's this jet stream that really helps to fire up some of those storms and bring you that best chance for severe weather. You can see those little areas heading out of Wednesday into Thursday that are going to be turning into those greens and the stronger jet stream energy there. Here we go Thursday into Friday. We've got some stronger energy in the Midwest, into the Ohio Valley. And of course, if you're right out ahead of those pieces of energy day by day, that's where you get the severe weather. I want to talk about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday's threats. Let's start with Wednesday. This is my personal ONW severe scale. By the way, if you want to go to any of those other days, make sure you're using those timestamps in the description to access those days. Here we go. Level 1 to level 7 threat scale. We're up to a level 3 of 7 in a couple zones in the Dakotas and then down there in parts of Nebraska, Iowa, northern Missouri, and northern Kansas. Those are the areas I'm really watching for the isolated to scattered severe weather coverage Wednesday with a new area of low pressure that's, of course, going to be forming around ports, parts of northern Nebraska into southern areas of South Dakota. That's going to help to focus that severe weather threat for mainly damaging winds and some hail in the plains and Midwest. West. Tornado threat could be a little bit more elevated there in some areas in Nebraska and Iowa, though. That will be something to keep an eye on in that general part of the risk zone. If you live in any of those colors, especially the dark green and yellow, keep an eye out as we go through our late Wednesday into our Thursday. Notice where I've got the magnifying glass. That's all that storm energy fueled by the daytime heating coming on up there into those areas that will have the best, not only severe weather threat, but at least isolated tornado threat Wednesday into Wednesday night. Also notice this is that low-level jet stream that comes from the south to the north. When you combine it with that jet stream that's going to be moving from the west to east further up, you're going to get some of that rotation in the atmosphere, and you saw those yellows, oranges, and reds in your Iowa and surrounding spots. That means that we will definitely have that potential for tornadoes go up just a little bit there Wednesday. Now, as we go towards Thursday, the threat shifts east from Minnesota down to Oklahoma, all the way as far east as Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee, at least a level 2 of 7 on my scale with that level 3 of 7 centered over Missouri and Illinois. This is because we're going to have the best threat for damaging winds in that location as early model guidance 
guidance persists in showing a cluster or maybe even multiple clusters of damaging winds across this general area into Thursday night. That's why I've got the general risk across this zone and of course that focus right there on Missouri. St. Louis that includes you into Springfield, Illinois, up to Chicago, Illinois, and far southern Wisconsin too. Just because it's a mainly damaging wind threat doesn't mean that we won't have that possibility of some isolated tornadoes or some of that hail. So keep an eye out for that as well as we go out of Thursday into our Thursday night. In fact, look at this moisture that's going to bubble up. This is just one model, but it agrees with a bunch of others. Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, that's going to be that focal point for some of those highest dew point values. The moisture is going to be incredible for supporting severe storms. The European model really puts the storms right in those areas coming out of Iowa into parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, from northwest to southeast, heading out of Thursday night in into early Friday. That's where that best chance for some of those strongest storms appears to be at this given time. And then as we go towards our Friday, I'm going to use the severe zones graphic, which is a little bit different for Friday. If you're in any of those dark green areas, that is where I would put down, if I were using my own to be severe scale, the highest confidence of a level two of seven for isolated severe storms. So Michigan over to parts of Western Pennsylvania, back down to the Gulf Coast and back over to the Central Plains. We're going to have the front draped along through any of these areas and the best chance for some isolated coverage of severe storms to appear somewhere in there. That is that dark green zone. As we go into our Saturday, the plane's really now out of the threat, but anywhere here from Arkansas and Louisiana up to, say, Vermont and New Hampshire, really that East Coast corridor, we will begin to see that severe weather threat rise. It'll be a little bit further out of the Ohio Valley and the Deep South as we go into our Sunday, but still along that East Coast is where that threat is going to be. So if you live in the Carolinas, the Mid-Atlantic, and parts of the Northeast, there could be multiple days of threats, and here's why. Look at that storm energy. See those greens and yellows into the plains all the way on over to the Midwest and Ohio Valley Friday. That's where that severe weather threat is expected to be in at least isolated fashion then here we go towards late saturday bubbling up with those storm energy values of that daytime heating really into a lot of the southeastern and eastern u.s here we go again sunday with a lot of that over the eastern half of the country of course day by day though in addition to the severe weather we're going to be having to watch that flood threat and let's start with wednesday wednesday night and into our early thursday's flood threat and look at where that's going to be you can see here coming out of the dakotas into parts of minnesota iowa northern missouri parts of illinois as well as wisconsin this is where that overall zone with those blues, yellows, oranges, and reds will be for at least an inch or maybe even two inches of rain, especially again where you see those deeper colors. Iowa, northern Missouri, maybe even coming out of Nebraska and northeast Kansas. That's where we have that best chance for severe weather. That could certainly overlap with some of those quick two to four inch totals plus of heavy downpours. So please be ready if you're in those areas. Be weather aware, at least as we go through the rest of this midweek time frame. Now, as we go out of Thursday and into our midday time frame on Friday, this encompasses Thursday and Thursday night's rainfall into our Friday morning. You can see here by this point, Quite a bit of rainfall now falling in that 24-hour window in Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and again, really anywhere in the circle, quite a bit of rainfall as the low-pressure system will be around in this zone. Down there towards Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, that's where it's going to be a little bit more variable and where the exact heaviest totals occur. There will definitely be the shot that we could see at least four to six inches of rain in some of those highest thunderstorm values in those locations, though. I mentioned earlier in the video that even if severe weather chances go down towards Friday into Saturday, and then as we go Saturday into Sunday, we'll still be watching the flooding. That should be the case in some parts of Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, down to Tennessee, all zones in between and around as we close out this week and head into the start of the weekend. Then here we go into our late Saturday through Saturday night and into our early Sunday. Look at where the heaviest rainfall is going to be then. Now pushing out of the Ohio Valley and towards the East Coast. And while this doesn't look like a whole lot of rain, most spots only picking up, say, half an inch to an inch at the highest. We will see those locally higher totals upwards of two or three inches of rain. And when you put that on top of areas that are very saturated from all the Debbie downpours that we had out of that tropical system last week, that could be a big concern. Also a big concern is, of course, if we're going to have heat or not across the country. And some areas are going to be very hot, while other areas are going to be chilling out in some very nice 60s and 70s, at least if you call 60s and 70s nice this time of the year. Let's take a look at where those anomalies are going to be day by day through the next six days from our August 14th heading into our 15th. So out of our Wednesday into our Thursday of this week, look like we're going to have some cooler than average temperatures in some parts of the West some parts of the north central U.S. and then over there to parts of the Carolinas and Virginia, the spots where we're going to be warmer than average. And this is mainly because it's going to be drier, sunnier with less thunderstorms down there to the southern plains. And in fact, that's going to continue there. New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, seeing those highest anomalies of 10 to 15 degree above average temperatures heading to the end of this week on our Friday into our Saturday, the 17th, the same deal in those areas. It's going to be near average to slightly below or above average, depending on where you are there in the Great Lakes and North 
northeast. Same goes back there into the far western U.S. And then at least according to my knowledge from what I've gained and what I'm showing you here on these temperature anomaly graphics, by the time we go towards Sunday and into Monday of next week, look at where those anomalies are going to be warmer than average for a lot of the central U.S., barely cooler than average anywhere. If that is to occur, it will likely be there in the Ohio Valley and northeast as that low finishes wrapping around. Let's take a look at those temperatures day by day. Of course, it's great to show anomalies, but it's even better to show exactly what those numbers come out to be. As we go towards our Wednesday, August 14th of 2024, that's tomorrow as I film this late on your Tuesday. 70s, some 80s getting in the mix up here, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, all the way over there to Ohio. Now, some of these temperatures rain cooled for sure, but there are going to be other areas that are just seeing some nice sunshine or some sunshine and clouds, and we're going to be in the 80s in this region and some 70s. So it is going to be definitely a little bit cooler than average for this time of the year. That's really going to persist over the next few days. You can see it even getting a little bit cooler in some of those spots in Minnesota, Wisconsin on Thursday. Speaking of Thursday, let's also look at those highs further south, parts of New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, all the way as far east as Mississippi, Tennessee, and Alabama, really seeing those widespread 95 to 100 degree readings. The heat index values will be even higher, upwards of 105 to 110 in some locations. If you're put under a heat advisory, and especially the, an excessive heat warning, please make it a first priority to find a way to keep yourself indoors, keep pets indoors, keep people you know indoors who might be in this area. Or, you know, your neighbors, too. Check in on them. Here we go towards our Friday into our Saturday. Temperatures really not changing much in terms of the overall pattern across the country. Warmer than average for so much of the southern U.S. If you're south of this line right here, it's at least going to be around to above average in most cases as we go towards the weekend. Plenty of 90s and some triple digits there into the southwest, the south central, and the southeast. Pretty normal for this time of the year, but again, those 110 degree readings we're seeing in some parts of Texas and Oklahoma. Not so much on our Saturday northward of that line at some 70s anywhere from minnesota to maine some spots in between even near the 60s for peak temperatures we'll see a few of those in some parts of michigan and new york i guarantee you some of those states surrounding that as well here we go towards sunday more 70s and 80s over that northeastern quadrant of the country meanwhile down there texas oklahoma arkansas and louisiana continuing to bake under that heat dome and that is not going to be moving too much anytime soon what is going to be moving just a little bit more is going to be Tropical Swarm Ernesta. This is just a very brief tropical update for those of you here in America, or if you're out there in the Caribbean islands and happen to be watching, I just want to give you a briefing on Tropical Storm Ernesto. It's got 60 mile an hour winds. As of as I film this video, it's probably going to increase right after I post. Anyway, tropical storm warnings up for some parts of our Caribbean islands, particularly there on the northeast side, places like Puerto Rico under those tropical storm warnings. Look at this highest track confidence. This is a great website. You see it down there in the bottom right side of your screen. The highest confidence for Ernesto to move is going to be right up there grazing the northern tip of Puerto Rico. Then it's going to curl to the north heading out of Wednesday into our Thursday. By the time we go towards Friday and into Saturday, B Bermuda. Definitely on high alert for some of those possible hurricane or even major hurricane impacts as the highest track confidence really takes it right over Bermuda. It's going to be hard to miss the impacts there. Then up there towards parts of Newfoundland, we'll also have to watch distant impacts from the storm. The U.S., though, really, other than some maybe bigger waves and some rip currents, not really seeing any direct effects. That's the good news there. That is it for this video. I'll see you right here in the next one at One Nation Weather. Thanks so much for bearing with me through this one. I'm checking out. One Nation Weather.